What's up, everybody? Um, back at it again. Filthy Rich, season one, episode two. Um, this episode was dope. I am enjoying the hell out of this series. Like Kim Cattrall is just killing it. Um, the whole cast really is just bringing it. They're bringing their A game with this show. Um, Margaret is seriously on some damage control shit right now. She has put her foot in her mouth. Now, I know last week I was totally on Margaret's side when it came to doing this press conference about outing Eugene's affairs and basically talking about how he fathered three illegitimate children. I was all for it for the simple fact that she took away Ginger's blackmail power. She took away Eric, Paul, Becky's blackmail power. All of them were using this scandal to their advantage to try to box her into a corner and get what they wanted from her. Ginger was using it to get $30 million. Paul, Becky, Eric, they were using this secret to get Paul, I mean, to get Eric in as CEO of the company. They all were trying to blackmail her. And my whole thing was, I was super happy that she didn't fall for the blackmail. I said, you know what? Take the power away from their ass. Did it come back and bite her in the ass? It did. It did. Because now that she went public with it, numbers are dropping. Numbers are definitely dropping over at the Sunshine Network. Ratings are down. Their online shopping store or whatever, um, the Sunny Club, the membership, the subscribers are down. Um, investors are pulling out. They don't want to pay for production because her projections are not what they thought they were going to be. Um, people are like, she's just losing her empire. Brick by brick, shit is hitting the fan. So she's in complete damage control now. She got to go back and make nice with everybody and get everybody back on her side or get back in their good graces by any means necessary to get everything back up to where it was before she went public with everything. Um, so she's holding this meeting with the kids. Jason's not there. He's back in Colorado. We'll get on that later because that's a mess. Um, Eric and Becky pull up. <sighs> Becky, her and that damn prayer that she prayed. <laughs> she was just spilling all the tea in that prayer. Um, Becky is trying to secure her position. She's trying to secure Eric's position, which is her position in a nutshell, her and Paul. Because, you know, wherever Eric go, Becky got to go to. Um, Eric decided he didn't want to go to this meeting because Margaret, I guess, basically told him, well, you know, they were going to talk about his future as well. He was like, nah, he decided to skip out because he said my future ain't got shit to do with Ginger and them other kids. Antonio was really trying to get to know um, Eric and stuff and be polite to him and stuff like that. But you could tell Eric and Becky are not here for it. They don't want to know him. They don't want to know Jesus, his son. They don't want to know them. Um, so we get to this damn meeting. And Margaret is basically laying down the law to everybody about how it's going to be. From now on, she was like, you know, all the kids are going to get $10,000 a week as an allowance. And Rose wasn't feeling it because Rose was like $10,000 a week. She said, that's the same damn allowance I've been getting since 16. I said, bitch, what? You've been getting 10 G. Antonio said the same thing. He said, you've been getting $10,000 a week since you were 16 years old. I said, what type of entitled, spoiled, rich people shit is that? $10,000 a week since you were a teenager? My allowance was fucking $5 a week for taking out the trash. And you got 10000 No wonder Eric and, and Rose are so damn entitled and privileged. 10000 You know, a week? Not even a month. A week. I was like, what type of shit is this? $10,000 a week? I'm in the wrong family. That's all I know. <laughs> like, I am in the wrong household. Let me just tell you, I was raised in the wrong house. $10,000 a week? Come again? Um, Yeah. So basically, she told them they're getting 10 G's a week as an allowance. Eric, I mean, not Eric, Antonio is to stop boxing. Well, she called it MMA. He was like, MMA. Um, she basically told him he's not going to be doing boxing anymore. She got him a job on her staff, basically, as security. And Ginger was like, you're basically her staff. <laughs> you're the help, basically. She hired her stepson as the help. 
And she got a job for Jason, too. And when she can get him back from Colorado, she's like, you know, I'm going to put him to work, too. I got, you know, a position for him. Um, Ginger, she basically was like, she's going to have to shut down her um, Sin Wagon website. You know, that little porno website she got. She going to have to uh, shut that down. Ginger was like, I ain't shutting down shit. I freaking love the battle between Ginger and Margaret. I'm here for it. I love it. Ginger was just like, you know what? I ain't shutting down a damn thing. She was like, I'm going to build my business off the back of yours. She was like, basically, she's going to use Margaret's business, the Sunshine Network, all of that shit, Monroe Unlimited. She's going to use all of that to build up her brand, her business. And um, she was like, I'm going to do that because I'm that bitch. Margaret got up out her seat, looked at her. She was like, you're that bitch. Well, I'm this bitch. <laughs> I love it. I was like, yo, I'm living for Margaret. She ain't shit when it come down to these kids, but I'm living for her. Um, Because she is just letting Ginger know, you may be that bitch, but I'm this bitch. I, listen, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. Fox, do the right thing. Renew the show for season two. Let's get it. Um, This is hot. This is really, really hot. Um... So, you know, Ginger, she go outside. She got the reporters there. She got her sin wagon van there. All the girls like she got a big banister, like all this, like this big poster of sin wagon hanging off the building. She got reporters out there telling them, oh, Margaret, don't give a damn about us. She look at us like we're trash, like just putting it all out there. I'm like, damn, Margaret, you better come correct next time because <laughs> she pulling your coattails with this press conference. I'm like, she is not playing um, Ginger and her mother and them, they end up going to this little seedy hotel. Basically, they want to rent out this little raggedy ass motel as their base of operations, as their headquarters, their office space and everything else for uh, Sinwag. Um, so she wants to rent it all out and stuff. And it's just nasty. That motel looks disgusting. Let's just put it that way. That motel looks ugh. even one of the chicks who was staying there was like, I got herpes just looking at the sweats on the bed sheets. I was like, hmm tragic um her mother tina basically don't agree with all of this you know what i'm saying she feels like her daughter's forcing you know she's showing her cars too much she's just you know doing too much at this point um but that motel just like nasty let's just put it that way antonio he has no problem going along with um margaret's bullshit because it's a check at the end of the day um He's going along with it because he needed for his son and apparently his mama too. Um, his mama, I guess, is in town and they need the money. And, you know, when he showed her that $10,000 check, um, she was like, you know, this is a down payment for an apartment and stuff like that. But this trick took the money, paid off some bookie or somebody she owed money to. Now they're asked out until next week when he get the other $10,000 check. His mom ain't shit. I could tell just by looking at her. She she seemed like she not gonna be shit. Like, come on now, you took that money. He was pissed. Um, Antonio is a nice person, but I feel like he's just going along with Margaret's bullshit because he need the money for his son. I feel like if it wasn't for his son, he probably would have been on the same shit Ginger on. Basically, he want more money, and I can't blame them for wanting that. You know what I mean? Like, come on now, this is a family that's worth over two billion dollars. Two billion. And basically, Ginger was asking the same question. She was like, what about, since you're talking about $10,000 a week, what about the 1% ownership in the company that Eugene promised them in the will? And Frank basically told them, well, you're not getting that until Margaret's dead. And Ginger was like, well, shit, don't tempt me. Because <laughs> I'll kill you right now. Um, so, yeah. So, Luke, the reporter, is running around. Because he's mad because the Monroe family fired him. So now he's freelance now. And he's trying to dig up what happened to um, Eugene's plane. Because he felt like somebody deliberately took down that jet. Because he said that jet was in really good condition. How the hell do a jet just go down like that? So he met up with Franklin at the bar. The attorney. The family's lawyer. And basically told him of his suspicions that he felt like somebody deliberately tried to kill Eugene. So Franklin basically told him... Keep digging, do what you got to do. I don't care. But he's loyal to the Monroe family, mainly Margaret, because he felt like they meant good to him. Um, Franklin, 
I wouldn't be surprised if he got feelings for Margaret because he's been riding for her since episode one. Like, even the way he looked at her, you could tell, like, he got lust in his eyes for that woman. He got lust and love for her. Like, even the way he was talking to Luke, the reporter, he was sitting there singing her praises and stuff. Oh, Margaret wouldn't do this. She ain't this type of person. And this Eugene, I mean, Franklin, you don't know who is what type of person when it come down to a fortune. Let me tell you something. The people you think you knew, you don't know them when there's billions at stake, when there's millions at stake. Hell, when it's $100 at stake, you don't know who you dealing with then. Because when it come down to a dollar, please, people will rob their own mama. You don't know what people would do. You think you know somebody until some money get involved. Then you don't know who the hell you dealing with. So Luke ended up going to see Ginger. He followed her to that rundown motel to talk to her. She was using that interview to try to promote her business. And he let her know real quick. I'm not here to help you promote your business. I don't do puff pieces. He was like, I'm here to get the real. Like he was asking her about when did um, Tina, her mom, Tina, fall in love with Eugene and all this, that and the third. He just trying to get a, a scoop, a big story about the Monroe family. And she was like, yeah, I'm done. She said, you can get the hell out. He was like, all right. He said, when you want to talk to me and give me the real and you want to be real, let me know. Luke is basically trying to dig up whatever dirt he can, trying to pin it on whoever he can at this point. He trying to find the dirt with the Monroe family. That's exactly all he trying to do. So anyway, moving on from that. Um, I did not know. Listen, I knew Ginger was a freak. I didn't know Ginger was a freak freak. She was up in that bed having a threesome. She woke up the next morning with a dude next to her and a chick on the other end at the bottom of the bed. She said, you got to wake up too, hun. I was like, oh, shit. You had a whole threesome with a dude and a female. Okay. All right. I didn't know you was that type of you. A freak, 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 freak. Several times over freak. I was like, okay. I kind of figured she was when you see her. You can tell she a little freak. Um... So, yeah, so she got the rest of the girls from Vegas down there or whatever, setting up shop. I guess her sister, Rachel, I'm guessing that's her sister. Um, They down there setting up shop and stuff like that, setting up um offices and business, you know, trying to get the business growing. But she, um, Rachel basically told her that a couple of days that they went dark on the website, the competition basically came in and swooped shit up and shut them down, basically. And you already know, Ginger wasn't taking that lying down. She was like, nah, I'm going to fix this. She said, nah, I'm going to get reborn again. She said, I guess it's time to reborn, get reborn. I said, yeah, sure is. Um, I already knew she was up to something because Margaret, basically, like I said, she's trying to do damage control. So she had to um, go over to the motel where Tina and um, Ginger are held up. And she was talking to Tina or whatever. Um... And that's when Ginger come, came in or whatever and was like, Mom, let's go. Because she told um, Tina that she wanted Ginger to be on Paul's show, the Reverend um, Paul Thomas, to be on his show getting baptized. Because she had to go to Paul when he was at the recording studio. Basically, she needs his help getting viewership back for the network and all that stuff. So she had to basically be, you know, eat some humble pie and admit that he was right. She should have never publicly outed. Antonio, Jason, and um, Ginger as Eugene's children because it bit them all in the ass. So now she needs him to help her get back those subscribers, get back those ratings. So he came up with the idea. He was like, why not put Ginger on the show, on his show to get baptized live? That's a, ra a ratings juggernaut. Why not? So she was like, no, okay, we'll do that. She'll see what she could do. But in exchange, she had to do something for Eric, little mopey ass. Because Eric running around like a little biatch, um, crying and moping around because he's not the CEO. So basically, Paul wants Margaret to give him something to do, make him feel important, make him feel like he matter. Um, so she threw him a bone or whatever, picking up where Eugene left off with the charity mission, charitable missions and stuff, you know, giving him a little bone. Because she still feel like he's not ready to be CEO yet. But she kind of juiced his head, talking about we need you, we this, that, and the third. I'm proud of you. You know she ain't mean none of that shit. <laughs> she just need people to, you know, fall back in place and get this business back running. That's all she need. Um, because Eric running around telling Paul and Becky, oh, y'all my only family now. Y'all and the baby. That's my only family. Forget about my mother. Paul was like, no, 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 no. Paul was like, nope, you need to forgive your mother. 
And the only reason why Paul is even telling him to do that is because they know Paul and Becky are the puppet masters. They are just stringing Eric along. That's all they're doing is using him. They want him to be CEO because he's going to be publicly, Eric's going to be the face of the company if he's CEO. Behind the scenes, everybody know Paul and Becky are going to be the ones really running the company behind the scenes. That's really why they're pushing so hard for him to forgive Margaret so they can keep him on the inside and try to gain the upper hand, figure out what, what Margaret is weak at so they can get some leverage on her again. That's all they want. That's all they're doing. And Eric is so stupid, he don't see that he being played. I'm like, you dumbass. Your wife and your brother-in-law are playing you stupid. That's all they doing. They trying to get control through your ass. You're the easy target, dumb dumb. Like, he just, he's too stupid for words. So, poor Eugene. <laughs> he over here at this old lady house or whatever. She got him cleaned up and washed up and stuff like that. He's sitting here reading the Bible. And she was basically asking Eugene, was he ready to go back home? He's sitting there talking about, no, I ain't ready to go back home. And, um, you know, because he knew he was going to have to face everybody and answer for all the bullshit. He knew it. Um, I got a feeling, though, Tina, um, Ginger's mother, was definitely in love with Eugene. Because even a reporter was wondering that when he was talking to Tina, um, when he was talking to Ginger. He was like, how come your mother never... Um, Signed a non-disclosure. How come she never wanted some hush money or something like that? Tina was definitely in love with Eugene. She definitely was. Even when she talked about the first time they made love, which is nasty. But she was talking about the first time they did it and how he wanted to see her without all that makeup on, see the real her. She was in love with him. She definitely was. Um, I don't know if he was in love with her or whatnot, but she was definitely sprung over him. So, basically, he's nervous about going back home to answer for all his sins. Um, so he had a little baptism of his own. She, um, the lady pretty much poured a bucket of water on him. Like this was the ice, the ice bucket challenge kind of thing, you know, poured it over him to give him some deliverance or whatever and get him on his way and told him basically, you know, just walk down the path. So unbeknownst to him and unbeknownst to Rose, when she was coming back to, uh, Louisiana, from going back to get Jason, quote unquote, um, she didn't even know that she drove past her own daddy, right on the highway, drove right by him and didn't even know. Um, so she went up to Colorado to go see Jason and bring him back. And the dudes was packing up all the marijuana and stuff like that, packing up all the trucks and stuff like that with the marijuana. And then they was like, oh, Jason got to a bad car accident and he in a coma. I said, she about to find out the truth. So she went to the hospital thinking that she's talking to that Jason when the other Jason pops up behind her and reveals to her that his real name is Mark and that the boy in the bed is really Jason and that's his adopted brother or something. Um, she was pissed because she felt conned, like he conned her, he conned Margaret. But he had a good reason for doing it, though, because... The medical bills are just kicking their ass. And now he has to shut down his weed business because the weed, the marijuana shit became corporate and he can't go up against billionaires. So she basically told him, well, come back to Louisiana and, you know, keep on pretending to be Jason so you can help cover his medical bills and stuff. I was like, OK, hopefully, you know, y'all not going to be sexing each other on the side, which they probably are because they clearly have an attraction to each other. But this is going to be interesting. Because when Eugene do finally make it back, I wonder if he's going to realize that's not his real son. Like, who's going to realize it? Because somebody bound to find that shit out. Um, so anyway, moving on from that. We get to this damn live baptism. Um, Ginger got on his white gown. Margaret got on her white outfit. And they sitting there holding hands and looking at each other, smiling, talking about, oh, you really got a place in this family. I knew some shit was about to go down. So they dump her in the water. She gets up. They got to blow out her nipples and stuff. And she got words on her thing. And it's basically her, her website logo. And she's promoting her um, Sin Wagon website um, through the Sunshine Network. <laughs> Margaret and them were pissed. They were pissed that she did that. And um, so they got the reverend to kind of go on his show and smooth things over with that and 
talked to the people and subscribers actually went up for the damn Sunny Club membership. They over 8 million and I said, okay. So basically the Reverend just saved Margaret's ass. Go figure. And she can't stand that dude, but he definitely saved her. So now they got to figure out what the hell they going to do now to figure this all, you know, get this shit back up and running. And come to find out, so Rachel, um, Ginger had got the idea to do like something new with the website. So she got some of her girls to dress up as angels and stuff. Um, and Rachel, I'm guessing it was Rachel. She did a video chat with some dude who wasn't showing his face at the time. And come to find out, the dude was Eric. So Eric is definitely using um, Ginger's website. I was like, oh, wait till Becky find out about this shit right here. I was like, oh, man, Becky, mm, Becky going to go to hell off. <laughs> when she find out that he looking at chicks getting naked and all that shit on that website, she ain't having it. When um, Franklin was telling Margaret about the reporter thinking that Eugene was killed, something, the way Margaret was looking... Something tell me she might have knew, she knew something about that or she might have had something to do with that plane going down because she knew he was taking the jet out of town that day. She knew. So who's to say she ain't get that shit rigged up before he left? Because her facial expressions was definitely telling me a story that she knew something wasn't right or she was playing to something. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if Margaret had something to do with that shit. <laughs> I would be surprised because you can't tell me Margaret didn't know that man was messing around all these years. All these years and you've been oblivious to it. Something tell me something in her mind snapped and she had enough of that shit. Come on now. But um, anyway, this episode was dope. Um, Hit the comment section. Let me know what y'all thought about this episode. I will see y'all all later. Peace.